गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग सर ओके सो टुडे वी हैव अराउंड 15 स्टूडेंट्स ऑन बोर्ड लेट्स बिगिन uh so yesterday we were talking about the enzymes so we were trying to see some characteristics uh, of the enzyme some concepts about the enzyme so i think the basic things are clear now the next thing comes that how does these enzymes they increase the rate of reaction okay and that as we know that it leads to the formation <clears throat> of a complex that is called as an enzyme substrate complex fine so this formation of the enzyme substrate complex what does it do it lowers down the energy of activation okay and if this activation energy is lower down the reaction can occur very fast right and this we have tried to understand with the help of a, a graph okay i'll just present the screen uh, we'll talk about that graph first and then we'll move in the forward direction fine let's see is the screen visible yes sir okay so this was the graph uh, what you can see here someone is trying to enter so this is the graph what uh, i was talking about so if you look at this uh, graph at the uh, on the x axis you have the reaction coordinate y axis you have the free energy change which is associated whenever the reaction is taking so just look at the uh, black line okay so you can see here as there is a substrate there is a product and as i told you that both the substrate and the product they are the stable products they have their own ground state and always the product will be having its ground state at a lower uh, energy as compared to that of the ground state of the substrate so that is why you can see that these two uh, stable products they are shown at the different positions now if this substrate if it has to be converted into the product it has to overcome a particular barrier and this barrier is called as what the uh, what you can say the time required or the energy required to convert the substrate into the product okay so how much energy is required so that can be calculated if you uh, know that uh, what kind of transition state or a complex it is going to form okay so if you look at here the energy associated with the transition state and the energy associated with the substrate and if you have the difference between these two energy levels that will give you the uh, free energy change between these two states and that is nothing but the energy of activation so what does it indicate that unless and until you provide the energy which is sufficient to that of the energy of activation then only your substrate will be converted into the product okay so from this what we can make a statement that higher the energy of activation slower is the is the uh, rate of reaction because it will require an higher and higher amount of energy so obviously the rate is going to decrease fine so keep this statement in mind that higher the energy of activation lower is the rate of reaction fine now if you have a catalyst okay like the catalyst the example which i have quoted yesterday about the heat that if you are providing heat to the atoms there is an increase into the uh, vibrations okay or the brownian moment what we call it as and then there are chances that they will come closer to each other at a very faster rate the same way what is happening here that if you are introducing a uh, catalyst into the reaction mixture okay so this catalyst is going to form a complex with the substrate right so here we are talking about the biological uh, entities so we are using the enzyme as a catalyst so what is going to happen that this enzyme is going to uh, form a complex with the substrate and it will form the enzyme substrate complex 
there is a possibility that these enzyme substrate complex will be converted into the enzyme product complex okay so these are uh, the imaginary uh, entities or the intermediates which has been taken into consideration by the different scientists so you can call them as the uh, intermediates which are transient in nature okay they could be existing but for a very very short amount of time okay so in between these two complexes that is the es complex and the ep complex you can see here there is a peak which is shown and this peak is nothing but the transition state which is formed when the catalyst is introduced into the reaction mixture right now if you calculate the energy of activation in this condition that you have added the catalyst to your reaction mixture so you can see here that this dotted line is of the substrate free energy of the substrate and this dotted line is the energy uh, free energy of the transition state and if you calculate the difference between this so you can see that the free energy change which is associated between these two states is very much low as compared to this so this is the uncatalyzed uh, energy of activation and this is the catalyzed energy of activation so here you can see that this formation of the es or the ep complex what it has done it has lowered down the <clears throat> energy of activation and this uh, lowering of the energy of activation is favoring the reaction to occur at a faster rate right so i think this uh, graph is clear so in this case these are the transient uh, uh, what you can say the complexes that is the es and ep while s and p they are the uh, stable complexes right so uh, this is how you can uh, suffix this uh, or you can prove this statement which is given that enzymes they affect the reaction rates not the equilibria okay so it is not going to affect the equilibria that if the reaction is increased so the conversion will be very much fast okay so always that uh, what you can say the equilibria is maintained okay so either it could be higher concentration of the substrate it could be higher concentration of the product or both of them they are at the same concentration so that equilibria is not being affected it is simply affecting the rate of reaction okay so that the reaction can occur fast and the things can be done here fine so uh, this is an example which i told you about the glucose so as we know that glucose when you are putting into the cells they will be immediately acted upon by the enzymes of your glycolysis tca cycle electron transport chain and obviously it will be converted into carbon dioxide and water but simply if you keep the glucose on table nothing is going to happen to it because it's a very very stable product okay and if you want to convert it into its uh, simpler products like the carbon dioxide and water you may require a huge amount of energy to convert it so or in other words i can say it, it it is impossible to convert that glucose onto the table into the carbon dioxide or the water molecule but it can be easily done into the cell within fraction of seconds by using the enzymes so that's the beauty of the enzymes that they are increasing the rate of reaction right so uh, these are the things which i have already told you uh, in when i when i was describing the graph now now here uh, the thing which is important is a rate limiting state because you should understand this concept that what do you mean by the rate limiting state now when you are uh, talking about this reaction we write it as what e plus s it will give the es complex okay and this es complex will be then converted into e plus p now the simple reaction that is e plus s converted to e plus p we have divided into two uh, separate reaction what are those two separate reaction that is e plus s is giving you the es complex and the next what you can say that the es complex is converted into the e plus p complex right i am i am skipping that ep complex here at present to uh, uh, to avoid the confusion i am not talking about the ep so i am just referring the es complex okay now in this we'll have to define that which reaction is going to be the rate limiting step okay rate limiting step is a reaction which is controlling or which is regulating that particular reaction 
okay with respect to its occurrence now in this case it is very much essential for the reaction to occur that it should form a complex that is the es complex right so here i can make a statement that the first reaction that is e plus s which is forming an es should be an rate limiting reaction but the moment the es complex is formed there are two fates for this es complex what are those two fates either it may go into the forward direction where it will be converted into enzyme and the product or it may again go back to the uh, backward direction where it will be again converted into the enzyme and the substrate so the es is having these two fates okay so who is deciding that this reaction is going into the forward direction that the product is going to form so it is what it is the breakdown of the enzyme substrate complex okay so in this case the second reaction that is the conversion of the es to the e plus s is nothing but the rate limiting step because that step is deciding whether the reaction is going to occur or whether it is going to complete or not okay so it is not the first reaction that is e plus s is forming es so it is the es being converted into the e plus p okay so the overall rate of that particular reaction is determined by whom the rate limit step okay and always this rate limiting step is the step okay which is uh, having the highest activation energy Yeah, and obviously it is going to uh, be different for the different type of the reaction species or the different reaction coordinates or the reaction conditions so i think uh, you are now clear with this particular uh, fact that uh, the enzymes they affect the uh, reaction rates and not the equilibria yeah now we'll move to the next characteristic of the enzyme that is called as the catalytic power or the specificity of the enzyme so uh, during school days we have been learning that these uh, uh, enzymes are uh, the one which increases the rate of reaction okay so they have a, a high amount of catalytic power or these enzymes they are highly specific they will act on some specific uh, substrate only so for each and every substrate you have the different type of the enzyme etc etc so there are many things what you people might have learned but now it's a time that we should be able to prove that yes that they have some power whereby they can increase the rate of reaction or if they have the specificity what kind of specificity uh, do they have and how this specificity be is being met by the enzymes so that the reaction can occur right so there are few statements which are placed down here that this enzymes they enhance the rate of reaction in the range of 5 to 17 orders of magnitude means 5 to 17 times more the rate of reaction is increased okay so maybe if i say that a, a, a particular reaction without a an catalyst it is taking around 10 minutes okay but if an catalyst is added the rate will be increased okay so uh, that at that particular magnitude you can uh, imagine that the catalytic power is there <clears throat> so how does the enzyme uh, how how you can prove that these enzyme they have this catalytic power or, or they are highly specific right so there are two factors which is affecting here so the first one is that these enzymes they have an ability to discriminate between the substrates with the similar structures okay so they can easily identify a particular substrate and then it will form a bond with that particular substrate and the reaction can occur so this gives us an idea that this uh, enzymes are uh, highly specific so how do we that uh, how it does this so the first thing what you can say that there is a rearrangements of the covalent bonds between the enzyme and the substrate the moment the substrate it approaches toward the enzyme there is a rearrangement of the covalent bonds fine now we know that the substrate it's free it is having its own functional groups which may having been may be having some charges etc etc 
the same way we have also seen that within the enzyme you have a region which is called as an active site and i have told you that within this active site you have some amino acid residues whose uh, functional groups are free okay so it is this site of the enzyme that is the active site within which the functional groups which are present they will directly form the uh, covalent bond with the uh, functional groups of the substrate right so this possibility of forming the covalent bond or the rearrangement of the covalent bond between the enzyme active site and the substrate you can say that that is helping in lowering the energy of activation okay so that is one of the possibility what you can say that there is an rearrangement of the covalent bonds fine the second thing what you can say here is the non covalent interactions fine the enzyme has identified the substrate the moment it has been identified it will be attached to it either by formation of the covalent bond or there would be some non covalent interaction which will take place between the active site and the substrate right so these non covalent interactions between the enzyme and substrate it is actually helping in in lowering the energy of activation okay and this uh, non covalent interactions are the same what we have talked which are responsible for the uh, stability of the protein structure what are those so they could be your uh, hydrogen bond the ionic bond the hydrophobic bond uh, van der waals bond planar bond etc etc so all those interactions are responsible for uh, for uh, binding the substrate to the enzyme active site okay now whatever may be the case whether it is the formation of the covalent bond or it could be the formation of the non covalent bond now whenever these bonds are formed there is a small amount of energy which is released and this re energy which is released it is providing stability to the enzyme substrate complex right and this energy which is released that is called as what the binding energy and this binding energy is responsible for lowering the energy of activation okay i think you got this point now that maximization or the presence of the higher amount of the non covalent interactions is releasing some amount of energy called as the binding energy and this binding energy is actually responsible for lowering the energy of activation so that the reaction can occur at a faster rate right so this binding energy is going to uh, give us an idea about the catalytic power or the specificity of the enzymes knowing this these two statements are being made what are those that much of the catalytic power of the enzymes is ultimately derived from the free energy release in forming many weak bonds and interactions between an enzyme and its substrate so i told you that more the number of bond formation more is the amount of energy which is released called as the binding energy and that binding energy is going to lower the energy of activation okay so this is one statement what we have done now when this interaction is taking place okay so these weak interactions they are maximized in the reaction when the uh, enzyme substrate complex is formed that is when it is going into the transition state so here you can say that the substrate is bound to the enzyme okay properly when it has gone into its transition state in other words what i can say that the enzyme active site is having a complementary to the transition state of the enzyme substrate complex right so the enzyme active sites are complementary not to the substrate but to the transition states fine so uh, this i think you will come to know when i'll show you the diagram now so these two statements are also now important here uh, if uh, uh, you are supposed to write an answer these two statements should come in your answer that is what i am emphasizing here fine so just look at this uh, diagram it's given in leninger you can refer it and uh, understand it 
Now, here one reaction is shown. There is no uh, enzyme, so it is an uncatalyzed reaction. So look at the graph. So obviously the free energy change here, that is the energy of activation is very high. And you require huge amount of energy to overcome this energy of activation. Then only this uh, metal stick which is shown, it can be broken. Okay, so this is the transition state. You'll have to bend it. Uh, then you have to, again you have to uh, apply some more pressure so that it can be broken into the uh, two uh, two entities. Right. So here this is a reaction which is occurring where a higher amount of force or the energy is required for it to occur. Now I am using a uh, what you can say catalyst. Now in this case, what is happening that this catalyst is having an exact complementary treaty to your substrate so you can see that the uh, blue color is an enzyme the uh, this space what you see is the active site now within this active site what is happening that your substrate can easily go and bind or it can be easily accommodated into the space of your active site now although here the enzyme substrate complex is formed we are considering that the enzyme is a rigid structure here because we have seen that it is forming a uh, compact structure, it could be a tertiary or a quaternary structure. Now, even though this enzyme substrate complex is formed, look what I'm trying to tell here, that even though this complex is formed, you will be requiring a huge amount of energy if you want to break this particular stick. Okay, because there is no free movement which is possible into the enzyme itself. Okay. So uh, just imagine, I have a synonym example, but uh, maybe some other time I may tell you again. So if you look at this graph, that at this point, there is a complex, that is the enzyme substrate complex which is formed, which might have lowered down the free energy. But in spite of that, if the reaction has to occur, if the substrate has to be converted into the product, you may require a higher amount of energy. Okay, because force has to be applied here so that this stick can be broken into the two entities. Fine. So this is the second condition which I have shown. So this is uncatalyzed. This is a catalyzed. But here the condition is what? That this enzyme is complementary to the substrate. Okay, whatever the structure of that uh, structure, size, shape of the substrate is there, it is complementary to that particular structure. Okay, so in this case also you are requiring a higher amount of energy. Now if you look at this third condition which is shown, where the enzyme is there which is having its active site. Okay, so uh, you can see in the first stage the enzyme can easily recognize the substrate, the substrate and come and bind to the active site. But the structure or the shape of the active site is such that where it is maximizing all the possible non-covalent interactions with the transition state of that particular substrate. Okay, so you can see here that the substrate it has entered, but the complementary is to what? Is to is towards the formation of the all possible non-covalent interactions, and those are possible only into the transition state. Right. So the active site complementation is with the transition state and if if it, that is if that is the case you can see here that it can be easily broken into the two pieces fine so just look at this graph uh, which is shown here so uh, in this case you can see that this uh, transition state the free energy of the transition state or the position of this transition state it has lowered down and it, once it has been lowered down means what does it indicate that it has lowered down the energy of activation so that the reaction can now occur at a faster rate right so this is what uh, uh, can be proved okay with the help of the uh, these particular diagrams about the complementation between the uh, enzyme and the substrate so there were two models which were proposed uh, the first one was the lock and key model so the lock and key model could be similar to that of the second condition which I have mentioned here. Okay. But then uh, the lock and key model was not uh, proved for all the enzymes and the substrates. So it had some limitations. 
but eventually when scientists they came to know that there is a complementation with the transition state and another uh, model which was proposed that is called as the induced fifth model means what means you are inducing some changes into the substrate and that induced structure is going to have a complementation with the active site of the enzyme right so that is what i think so the next slide will show you uh, so what actually happens when there is a physical interaction between the enzyme and the substrate okay so as we have seen that there is an uh, there are many factors which is helping us to lower down the energy of activation so this uh, lowering of the energy of activation could be due to some factors so some three to four uh, different uh, factors are there so the first one what you can say that there is a reduction in entropy in the form of the decreased freedom of motion of the two molecules in solution see there is a reduction into the entropy means what initially you had two entities one is enzyme one is the substrate so the entropy is more but now once the complex is formed obviously the entropy has been decrease so that is one of the factor uh, which is responsible for it next the solvation shell of the hydrogen bonded water that surrounds and helps to stabilize most biomolecules in aqueous solution if you remember i i had been telling you that in biological system you never have any molecule which is a charged molecule even though the active site of your enzyme it consists of the functional groups of the amino acid residues which are interactive but those uh, active sites they are solvated with the water which is present into the environment fine obviously the substrate is also solvated so when such type of molecules they come together the water molecules are removed and then the interaction is taking place so that removal of the water molecule and the interaction between the enzyme substrate complex is also favoring in stabilizing the uh, enzyme substrate complex <clears throat> the third could be your distortion of the substrate that occurs in many reactions so as i i was telling you in the diagram in the third uh, diagram what we see that the substrate is distorted so that all the possible non covalent interactions can take place and that is also responsible for lowering down the energy of activation and the last one which is very much essential or very much important that if uh, you want to prove that the, there is a specificity uh, between the enzyme and the substrate the possibility should be that there is a proper alignment between the functional group of the substrates and the functional group of the active site of the enzyme right so going at the molecular level to understand that how the enzyme is interacting with the substrate how it is helping into lowering the energy of activation these are the four uh, factors which might be responsible for lowering the energy of activation and to increasing the rate of the reaction right i think now this is clear and from this as i told you or i mentioned that there was an uh, hypothesis which was mounted or one model which was proposed that is called as an induced fute model by the Koshland. Okay, so it was postulated by Daniel Koshland in 1958. So that became the model which has helped us to understand the enzyme substrate interaction. I think it's clear. I am audible. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> Fine. Uh, so uh, that was all about to and uh, uh, all about to understand about the uh, catalytic power or the specificity of the enzyme fine now the next point comes that what kind of catalysis is occurring between the enzyme and the substrate so what are the entities or what are the things which are responsible to carry out this particular catalytic activity of the enzyme so there are three proposed uh, models okay uh, which helps us to understand that how the uh, catalysis is taking place between the enzyme and the substrate so the first one is the uh, general acid base catalysis <clears throat> now uh, here in this case uh, 
so there are many bio, biochemical reactions what we know which are uh, taking place okay now during this uh, interaction between the enzyme and substrate you might be uh, having some intermediates which are formed these intermediates uh, are the unstable intermediates but still they are held together for a fraction of second so they have to interact with the neighboring molecules okay so and the neighboring molecules is obviously the environment that is the water now here simply by uh, taking the proton from the environment or giving the proton to the environment you can say that these transient states or the enzyme substrate complex which has been formed it can be uh, carried into the forward direction or it could be carried into the backward direction right so here this particular type of the catalysis it utilizes simply the donation of the proton or the acceptance of the protons okay so if it is an uh, uh, what you can say an uncatalyst type of the reaction there you can say it is the water which is responsible for donating or accepting the uh, protons fine so uh, in catalyzed reaction also you may have the role of water which will act as a donor or acceptor but there could be some other uh, functional groups which are present into the active site which may act as an proton donor or acceptor fine so this ability to donate or accept the protons between the substrate and the different functional group of the active sites or the uh, water okay is helping the reaction to occur so such type of mechanism which is taking place with the help of the donation and acceptance of the protons is called as what the general acid base catalysis okay <clears throat> so there are different functional groups which are helping into this general acid base catalysis uh, for that i have opened the leninger book i'll just show you the reaction what i wanted to show here yes so uh, i think it's visible yes sir yeah. okay so here you can see that the, these are the two reactants they are reacting with each other they are forming a complex now this complex is an unstable complex now okay now this complex either it may accept or it may donate the proton depending any one of these conditions so you can see on one side it is the water which is uh, uh, used as an donor or acceptor and on the other side any functional group could be there which can act as an as a donor or acceptor so by the involvement of this water or any uh, donor or acceptor this reaction this unstable structure which has been formed it can be converted into the products here fine so it's the leninger book you can go to it and you can refer this right so this is how uh, the rearrangement can take place and the two products can be formed here now water we we can understand so either it could be in the form of h plus but h plus never exists so it is h3o plus so either it may be form of the h3o plus or it could be in the form of oh minus so that is one of the entity which can help into this general acid base catalysis and the second one what you can see that the different r groups so you can see here it is glutamate aspartate lysine arginine cysteine histidine serine tyrosine so all of them they have some r groups which can act as a donor or acceptor so these are the two forms which are shown one is the proton donor form one is the proton acceptor form so these r groups of the amino acid residues they also play an important role in the general acid base catalysis fine uh, so this is one of the uh, mechanism whereby the enzyme and the substrate reaction can occur second one is called as the covalent catalysis now this covalent catalysis is easy to understand again i will go back to the book in the book it is given all these reactions so you can refer it afterwards so you can see here uh, the covalent catalysis see what happens in the covalent catalysis so it is the ab which is converted into a plus b okay so in presence of water uh, without the enzyme the reaction can occur but it will take a longer time but in presence of uh, the end catalyst or the enzyme what it is going to happen so you have this ab it's this is the substrate and you have this enzyme with some specific functional group 
okay which is which could which is an electrophilic in nature which could be a nucleophilic in nature anything now what is going to happen into this covalent catalyst so here the bond between a and b is going to break first okay so any one of these that is either a or b it is going to form a bond with x so if you see here that you can see a bond is formed between a and x so you get the ax and the b is released okay so the first thing what is happening here that the b is being released from the enzyme now next in the presence of water what is going to happen that this a is also being released from the enzyme where a is obtained b is obtained and you have the pure enzyme back okay so such type of mechanism if it is occurring into the enzyme substrate concent uh, enzyme substrate interaction that type of mechanism is called as what the covalent catalysis okay so for this what is required that your active side of the enzyme should have some specific functional groups which are either having the positive charge or which are either having the negative charge right so then only this covalent catalysis can occur so simply it is an interchanging or in exchanging the covalent bond between the substrate and the enzyme now a condition can come that my substrate is completely negatively charged means my substrate is having some functional groups which are negatively charged at the same time i am having the enzyme with the active side which is also negatively charged okay so both the entities that is your enzyme as well as the substrate both of them they are negatively charged okay now they are specific for each other the reaction is going to happen but both of them they are negatively charged so if they try to come closer to each other what is going to happen there will be a repulsion so the reaction will not take place but still that kind of reaction is happening so how it is happening so for that the third type of the mechanism it comes into picture okay and that is called as what the metal ion catalysis fine so here your enzyme active site is also negatively charged your substrate is also negatively charged but i have to bring both of them together i want the reaction to occur between this enzyme and substrate so for that what i'll require i'll require an additional factor and that is nothing but an metal so that metal ion should be positively charged so then only both the negatively charged enzyme and the substrate they can come together and the reaction can occur right so that type of mechanism which is occurring with the help of the metals that is called as what the metal ion catalysis and that is why we have seen that in most of the biological uh, or the biochemical reactions you require some support some cofactors and they are nothing but the metals okay so where i have told you about the glycolysis pathway so all the enzymes okay all the enzymes of your glycolysis pathway they require an uh, cofactor that is the magnesium why because throughout the glycolysis pathway if you see you have the phosphorylated intermediates so the moment there is a phosphate you have the negative charges on so to stabilize or to suffice the interaction between the enzyme and the substrate these phosphate groups are always associated with the magnesium ions fine so these are the three types of the uh, mechanisms which can help us help us to understand the catalysis uh, between the enzyme and the substrate so for a given reaction any one of this type of the catalysis can be occurring so either it could be your uh, general acid base catalysis it could be your uh, what i told you yeah covalent catalysis or it could be the metal ion catalysis is it clear any difficulty yes no sir any questions audut no sir मी काय सांगितलं कळालंय सगळं हो सर कळा बर ठीक आहे सो दॅट वॉज ऑल अबाउट दी बेसिक्स विच वी आर रिक्वायर्ड टू अंडरस्टँड दी डिफरंट प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ दी एन्झाइम्स सो आय थिंक यू विल नॉट यू विल बी एबल टू गिव दी जस्टिफिकेशन टू द डिफरंट स्टेटमेंट्स विच कुड बी मेड 
that these enzymes they increase the rate of reaction so how do they do it they are highly specific they are having a high catalytic power uh, what are the different type of the catalysis etc etc fine now uh, the next uh, problem which was there in front of the scientists to understand that how to calculate the rate of reaction and that is why the enzyme kinetics it came into picture so it's very difficult to uh, calculate the rate of a particular reaction because uh, it's invisible uh, type of a reaction we cannot visually observe it we cannot uh, visually uh, what you can say quantify it so that was a problem uh, whereby the rate of the reaction cannot be calculated and for this uh, after many experimentation by different scientists it was the michaelis manten who proposed his own uh, model to calculate the rate of reaction so what he did he simply did an experiment uh, by taking a, a, a fixed amount of enzyme and he tried to see the effect on to that enzyme activity by changing the substrate concentration okay so he did that simple experiment he took around some uh, different test tubes in that test tubes he added um, the enzymes the fixed concentration of the enzyme okay so it could be suppose uh, 1 1 ml i am just giving you a representative example so he had just added 1 1 ml of the enzyme and in the different tubes labeled as 1 2 3 4 he added the substrate but the substrate which was added it was an Uh, in increasing concentration so maybe in the first uh, tube uh, he added 1 ml of the substrate then 1.5 ml then 2 2.5 like this he go on uh, went on increasing the uh, substrate and then he tried to find out uh, that what kind of changes are occurring into those particular tubes obviously it was the spectroscopic technique which he has also used to find out uh, the absorbance etc etc but then still uh, the problem was there that he was not able to understand uh, that how to calculate this rate of reaction so for that uh, what they did they have uh, thought of three different hypotheses or three different hypotheses uh, or conditions were uh, proposed okay and by knowing those particular three conditions okay he put out uh, put it down into a particular equation and that equation is nothing but the michaelis manten equation what we uh, nowadays we study it so this uh, mm equation which gives us an mathematical or an quantitative relationship between the enzyme the substrate the maximum velocity okay uh, so that equation is based on some three different type of the hypothesis or three different type of the assumptions okay so already we had a presentation on this uh, michaelis manten equation but uh, what you people should know here that when you are talking about the michaelis manten equation it is based on three assumptions or three hypotheses okay so these are the three different entities which were considered at different time when the reaction is occurring and by combining all these three we get that particular equation what we call it as an michaelis manten equation right so um, for that um, i'll go back to the slides yeah yes i'll just explain this slide and then we'll stop <coughs> so this is what is the experiment what he has done so what he did uh, on the x axis he has put the substrate concentration while on the y axis you can see that he has calculated the velocity that is the rate of the reaction okay so you can call it as the rate of reaction or the velocity etc and then he, he plotted the graph now after plotting the graph what uh, the way uh, the type of the graph what you see is that initially Uh, the velocity is not the velocity is increasing okay so it is increasing 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 but after uh, some amount of concentration of the substrate 
this increase into the velocity is not uh, exactly uh, what you can say doubling okay so there was a small decrease into the uh, velocity and again at the higher concentrations this velocity it goes on decreasing and at some point we come to a plateau region okay so you get something something uh, a graph which is like this now if you look at the graph this graph is having a nature similar to that of the growth curve of a bacteria so you can compare this graph with the growth curve of the bacteria so in that case also you might have said that there are three phases in case of the bacterial growth curve so i think so it is called as a lag phase then you have the log phase and then you have the stationary phase now can you tell me in short what do you mean by the lag phase yeah yes who can tell me vidya yes sir what do you mean by the lag phase uh, in the lag phase enzyme sub enzyme at which the substrate is bind no no i am talking about the bacterial growth curve what do you mean by the lag phase Oh, so uh, in the lag phase, uh, bacteria prepare to uh, increase their number. Okay. 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 Uh, Snehal, what is it? Yes, sir. Ah, uh, what do you say? Is she correct? Yes, sir. Okay, now what do you mean by log phase? Log phase. Ah. Uh. Um. So this is characterized by a cell doubling. Okay. Growth is, ah, uh, growth is not limited. Uh huh. सांगा ना जरा आता तुम्ही एवढं इतका वेळ केलं असेल ना ते पटपट सांगा की काय असतं ते ओके फाईन श्रद्धा काय वाटत नोपूर वॉट डू मीन बाय स्टेशनरी फेज in stationary phase the nutrients that uh, the bacteria has been consumed they start uh, deteriorating and at that point there is no uh, uh, crucial or significant growth of a uh, bacteria okay fine uh, so uh, all of you have studied about this growth curve so you have this lag phase now this lag phase is uh, state where the bacteria is uh, acclimatizing itself to that particular environment because it's a new environment in which we are inoculated so it will take some time to show the actual doubling okay so if i added uh, some say suppose uh, 10 cells instead of getting 20 cells i'll be getting only something 12 cells or 13 cells something like that so it is a simply an acclimatization of that organism to the environment so it will take some time okay to show the doubling into the uh, it's uh, increase into the number of cells but the moment the lag phase is over you enter into a phase that is called as an log phase and the log phase is the phase where there is an vigorous growth into the bacterial cells okay so you may get the exact doubling okay but then as the number of cells it goes on increasing there are some limiting factors which could be there and the limiting factor here in this case is the nutrients if more number of uh, cells are there your nutrients are getting depleted because you are not changing the media okay the media it remains the constant so here the nutrients are depleting and that depletion into the nutrient is affecting the actual doubling of the bacterial cells and that is why you see that there is an slowly slowly there is a decrease into the uh, increase into the number of cells and there also at some particular point called as the stationary point where you get that there is no 
bacterial uh, growth which is taking place fine so this is what uh, you may expect uh, for your bacterial growth curve the same way if you look at this graph which is shown which is showing you the relationship between the uh, the substrate concentration and the rate of reaction so you can divide this particular graph into the three phases that is the lag phase log phase and the stationary phase so the initial increase what you are getting you may not get the proper increase okay so there also the enzyme and the substrate will have to accommodate with itself so you may not get an exact uh, doubling okay uh, and that is why you are getting this uh, what you can say a line which is somewhat near to the y axis hey baga what you are doing you are increasing the substrate concentration so what actually the graph should be that you should have got a straight line graph like सिंपल है ना तुम्हें एंजाइम टाकता है सबसेट टाकता है जस तुम्हें सबसेट कॉन्सेंट्रेशन वाढ़ता है तो यू शुड गेट द डबल एंड आई शुड हैव गॉट द स्ट्रेट लाइन बट इंस्टेड ऑफ स्ट्रेट लाइन व्हाट यू आर गेटिंग यू आर गेटिंग दिस हाइपरबोलिक ओके सो व्हाट डज इट इंडिकेट दैट इन द इनिशियल कॉन्सेंट्रेशंस ओके दिस इन द इनिशियल कॉन्सेंट्रेशंस द एंजाइम माइट बी गेटिंग अक्लोमेटाइज विद द सबस्ट्रेट राइट एंड आफ्टर दैट it may enter into the phase that is called as the log phase where you can say that there is an uh, faster rate of reaction or the doubling into the rate of reaction now as the reaction is proceeding okay you can see that there was a decrease into the rate of the reaction why because here here also there is one limiting factor what could be the limiting factor here yes who can tell me what is the limiting factor here tejal yes what is the limiting factor what is kept constant here स्टेशनरी फेज अरे का विचार योर रेट ऑफ रिएक्शन शुड गो ऑन इंक्रीजिंग इफ यू आर इंक्रीजिंग द सबस्टेट कॉन्सेंट्रेशन बट स्टील यू आर गेटिंग अ प्लेट्यू देर अ स्टेशनरी फेज इज देर सो वॉट बिकम्स लिमिटिंग इन टू दिस रिएक्शन एंजाइम कॉन्सेंट्रेशन यस so it is the enzyme see you are not changing the enzyme i told you that we are putting as uh, uh, what you can say the same amount of enzyme in all the tubes only what is varying is the substrate concentration okay so even if you are increasing the substrate but your enzyme it becomes a limiting okay and that is why we reach to a uh, position that is called as the stationary phase or a plateau region okay and that uh stationary phase we call it as an v max that is the maximum velocity that yeah, that is you have reached to a stage okay where you have got the maximum velocity and after that even if you are increasing the substrate concentration the velocity is not going to increase so we have that maximum velocity right uh then uh, you can see here that there is a line which is shown dotted line so this dotted line it indicates or it helps us to uh, have the parameter called as an km so km is nothing but a constant but it can be related to the substrate concentration so uh, km as uh, she, uh, during the presentation she has defined km is nothing but the substrate concentration uh, at the uh, half of the maximum velocity so you can see here this is the maximum velocity which you can calculate and then half of it Uh, if you plot it onto the graph you get the uh, km at this point so where it is intersecting on the x axis we call it as an uh, sub that that substrate concentration is nothing but the km right and this is the equation what uh, we are supposed to derive so maybe tomorrow we'll talk about this that how this equation it came into existence what are the different uh, assumptions which has been made i'll tell it in short and then we'll continue with the presentation So, who has given this presentation? 
Sami Nupur. Nupur, okay. So if required Nupur, you can continue if something is remaining from your side. Okay. So first I'll explain uh, my views about this MM equation and then we'll listen to Nupur. Because I think Tula Gaitri Sangai to Yes, sir. Transformations in MM equation, the part okay, okay, fine. So that we will continue with your presentation tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, sir. Okay. Uh, so please write your roll numbers in the chat box. Priya, send me the numbers. Priyanka, na? not Priya, Priyanka. Yes, sir. Okay, so if you have any questions, you can ask me or uh, we'll call it for a day. Good day, all of you. Good day, sir.